for everyone watching. I do wish you a great 18th of May, great Independence Day. <laughs> Ayo hey, my people, it's your boy Monty here and welcome back to a special episode on Vibe with Monty today and today I am joined by my walala, my Adair, Eid, how are you? I'm good Adair. No worries, uh, we are here today because obviously the day you guys will be watching this it will be Independence Day for Somaliland, it will be 18th of May so I thought why not do a special episode, not my usual Friday, Sunday uploads something easy, relaxed, you know, special for you guys to enjoy and for my Somaliland community to enjoy um, on top of that, you might, even though you're not from Somaliland and you'll be watching this, if you are watching this and you're not from Somaliland this is a day for you to understand more about the country, culture and everything to do with Somaliland. So I thought no better person to bring than Eid here. And we're going to digest on a lot of topics, um, but more of a relax, you know, make sure we're comfortable, make sure we're all good. But how are you? I'm good out there. Good to see you. Good to see you too, of course. Long time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We go very <laughs> far back. Absolutely. You, you were about, I think, 12 years, 13 years when you were playing the football at yes. the and Somaliland community. Yes, yes, yes. So it's a pleasure really to be here tonight with you. Thank you, uh, thank you. Especially discussing su uh, such a very important topic. Mm -hmm. And that the topic or uh, in uh, cause that lie in my heart, mm -hmm. like Somaliland. So very pleased to be here. No Celebrating worry. 18 May with of you course, with you. of course. <laughs> yes, you might obviously yeah. know it's not 18th of May for us right now. It's actually the 17th. But to, when you watch this, it will be Independence Day. So we'll be speaking as if it is Independence Day. So you guys can have a feel about what we're talking about now. But before we start, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Make sure you go on all the social media for myself, for Eid as well. I'm going to put his socials for you guys to go check out, go support. Um, but now, wallahi, one thing that... Oh, actually, I just remembered. Just hit me, just hit me. Different setting. This is a new studio that I'm in. You know, I'm going to put the links of the brothers in the description. Go check them out. Um, if you like the layout, let me know. I might come in more often. The travel was hard to get here, but you know, the consistency, I'll get used to it. Now I know where I'm going. You should, see me, you should be seeing me here more often, inshallah. But um, what I've done is the original plan was to have like a panel have different people here um, to actually talk about Somaliland. However, obviously, because of the date of 18th for me, it being a working day, everyone has obviously their other commitments going on. So make sure, you know, like to the people that I, was, I reached out to, I understand your, all your circumstances. And you know what? As a gesture of, of like, an, as a nice gesture, they all recorded 30 second to one minute clips talking about what 18th for me means to them. Um, so I think it's a nice touch and I will be playing it later on in the episode when we do touch on what the eight, what 18th of May actually means to us Somalilanders. So, um, but right now, what I want you to talk about there is Somaliland as a whole. For those that don't know, that is not familiar with Somaliland, mm -hmm. in a nice summarized way, what does Somaliland mean to you? In, uh... Before actually talking about what Somaliland means to me, I will explain or I will introduce Somaliland. That's very, very true. That's very, very true. Somaliland is, of course, in Somaliland. In uh, Somaliland is an African country. In uh, Somaliland is located in East Africa, uh, particularly in uh, specifically in the Horn of Africa, and it has a border with uh, Djibouti in the north and west in the West Ethiopia and in the East and Southeast Somalia. In Somaliland, it's not Somalia. For non-Somalilanders, uh, for you viewers who are not Somalilanders, because many people, when they hear Somaliland, they think, oh yeah, Somalia. No, it's not. They may, the two names may be similar, like many other countries who have similar names yes. or even the same names in Africa. We have so many countries who have the same names. In West Africa, we have Guinea, it's Guinea Conakry, Guinea Equatorial, Guinea Bissau. In, uh, so Somaliland and Somalia is two different countries. And 
Somaliland used to be a British protectorate back in the days of colonial time. Somaliland is actually in, uh, in uh, created in uh, like any other African countries by the scramble of Africa, and and it was from nine from eighteen eighty eight to nineteen sixty a British protectorate, and after the protectorate in nineteen sixty, and Somaliland became independent. Of course, you mentioned a few times 18 May as an Independence Day. But 18 May is the rebirth day. Yes, yes, or yes. Or yes. is the day that Somaliland withdrew from the union with Somalia. Yes. So what is that union with Somalia? Somaliland became independent on the, 19th, on the 26th, 26th of June, June yes. 1960 yes. from the United Kingdom. And the Somaliland... Independence Declaration was was signed by the Queen Elizabeth, but unfortunately, in the 1960, as many people will know, in 1960 is called as the Year of Africa. Mm. There was a sense of Pan Africanism across the continent, and there were so many countries that tried to unite, like in Af in West Africa we yes. had the Ghana and Togo. We had the Senegal and Guinea and, and Gambia, Senegal, Mali. They all joined, tried to unite, but immediately after a few months or few years, they separated again and went back to their original borders and that they became independent. Yes, of course. But Somaliland, it was a different in uh, case. Somaliland, it was the same in, in the sense of the, the feelings of actually coming out from colonialism and, and joining Africa, enjoy yeah. wanting to form a union with their brothers and sisters, and the Pan Africanism, and there was a Pan Somalism, what, what, what they called uh, at the time. And they, they wanted to unite all the Somali countries or territories in East Africa or in the Horn of Africa, like Somaliland, Somalia and uh, the Howden Reserved Area, which is part, and Ogaden, which is part of Ethiopia, and the Northern Front District, which is part of Kenya, and Djibouti, which is a, a country in, uh, in, in called the Republic of Djibouti, mm -hmm. uh, French colony. colony yeah. So in, uh, when Somaliland became 26, the independent on the 26th of June, five days after, on the 1st of July, Somalia became independent from the trusteeship uh, mm. of the United Nations. Okay. Because what happened is, in after the Second World War, in uh, when the the Italian were defeated because they were part of the in uh, Nazi Germany, Nazi, Nazi Germany in uh, allies. So, in Britain actually in uh, conquered Somalia, but Somalia used to be a Italian colony. Yes. So in uh, they actually in uh, they governed or in uh, took power and uh, they were there about ten years from 1941 up to 1950. Okay. But when after the Second World War, one day actually the United Nations was formed and uh, in. Uh, the actually independence or the the what they call the self in uh, the termination in act is been in uh, in uh, introduced in the United Nations and the and uh, the independence uh, the, the, the 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 movement mm -hmm. that actually wanted the independence of the colo of the colonized countries yes in uh, so the Somalians actually they actually in requested to be in uh, in, uh, in uh, were governed by the Italians okay. under the UN trusteeship until the independence. So on the first of July they became independent from the UN uh, from the UN trusteeship, but under the umbrella of Italian. So in when they became independent on the first of July, on the same day, the union between Somaliland and Somalia took place mm -hmm. and a country called the Somali Republic. Republic yeah, yeah. And, uh, but immediately after the union, 
actually the union didn't went well and there was no because it wasn't prepared it wasn't talked deeply about it it was just that sentiments of uh, in uh, feeling uh, together yeah getting together being together and being bigger and that kind of in uh, in uh, sentiments mm -hmm. in but somaliland somalilanders Im immediately after few months they actually in um, being deceived but and they actually in uh, came they 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 faced the reality yeah that that it is not what they wanted mm -hmm. and in 1961 december 1961 the uh, some officers some Maliland uh, military officers tried to do a coup to actually bring back Somaliland independence, but it didn't went through, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But to to actually make sh short a long in uh, story, and uh, Somaliland is actually in uh, and created or formed a rebellion in the 80s, early 80s, mm -hmm. to liberate Somaliland again. Mm -hmm so that Somaliland become independent again. And uh, Somaliland, they, uh, they, it used to be called SNM, the Somali National Movement, mm -hmm. in uh, liberated Somaliland early 1991, in, in January. And uh, in May 19, 1991, in Somal the, the Somaliland came together in the town of Burao, mm -hmm. and actually they in uh, to actually decide about their their fate so what what do we want to do mm -hmm. now that we are free so the people in unanimously said we want to reinstate our sovereignty mm -hmm. and on the 18th of may is the day that the somalilanders declared their reinstate reinstatement of somaliland sovereignty okay so in uh, that's the in short, the history, 26th of June is the Independence Day from the United Kingdom and the 18th of May is the reinstatement of reinstatement sovereignty. Sovereignty, yeah. Sovereignty. And uh, since then, in, uh, they were, it was uh, because Somaliland, we, the, Som we, the Somaliland started from the scratch. Somaliland was bombarded uh, to the level of the ground and there were planes and uh, artillery uh, that actually in uh, being used to Somalilanders indiscriminately in about almost 100,000 people mm -hmm. in, uh, in uh, lost their lives, mm -hmm. there were genocides. Until now, when the heavy rains falls, there are in uh, mass graves has been discovered every year. In, uh, and it's been actually in confirmed and uh, by the United Nations experts that a genocide take, took place in Somaliland against the people of Somaliland. And, uh, but luckily, Alhamdulillah, in uh, all that, now it's tomorrow is gonna be 18 May, it's 31st years after, after Somaliland is reinstated their sovereignty. Mm -hmm. It has been now the fifth president is in place, while in many countries of Africa, maybe the same president is in power since 1990. Yeah, 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 of course. But in Somaliland is the fifth president. There has been so many elections took place. We, we in uh, the, there is a democracy, vibrant democracy, in uh, press freedom, press freedom, in not everything is perfect. Of course, perfect. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, but but of in, uh, but it's, it looks uh, good. Yeah, but we in walking the walk. And uh, in, uh, the aspiration is to actually in, in st make Somaliland and keep Somaliland as a free, a fr free country in where actually people's dignity are preserved. And, uh, and yeah, Somaliland is, can live peacefully. Of course, without the fear of any in uh, in foreign. Uh, of course, because yeah. because I think one thing like you summed up really well with like the history and making a lot of people understand that wasn't familiar in the past of the storyline of 
like in a very brief span like obviously we can't we can't all go about and you know like you can all do research for yourself to see how Absolutely. things are and how things developed over many many years i think what is really nice and touching is how like the people understood like we understand some things are not right for us such as like the unification like you were saying how people wanted to be together people wanted to have that sense of togetherness and in a very quick uh, space of time they realized you know what we'd rather be in ourselves within ourselves and operate within our own means you know um so it's really nice to hear and i appreciate you summing up very very nicely i did want to uh, bring the mic just wait one sec So, um, I did want to touch on the, obviously, like he said, the actual independence. If he was talking about leaving uh, the the rule of the United Kingdom, is obviously the twenty sixth of June. Um, however, we as Somalilanders also do celebrate eighteenth of May because of what happened in nineteen ninety one. What does uh, actually you know? What, before we even get to that, I want to play some clips that a lot of people that was meant to be here and obviously due to certain circumstances couldn't come but i want to play the clips for those to see what it actually means the day of significance the, the day of 18th of may what does it mean to us people so i'm gonna play the clips now today is 18 may happy re-independence somaliland everywhere you are i hope you have a wonderful day with your family uh and friends um somaliland 18 may represents uh, the reclaiming of Somaliland sovereignty after a brutal genocide by the Somali Republic. We celebrate all of our heroes. We remember um, those who sacrificed their lives uh, for us to be here today, to live in peace and prosperity. Ayub, say happy Somaliland Day. Happy Somaliland Day. Have a beautiful day. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Happy, happy 18 May. Happy Independence Day to my people of Somaliland. In fact, actually, me and uh, Monty were supposed to do a podcast together, especially dedicated to Somaliland today. That was supposed to be released today, but unfortunately, due to our busy schedules and other circumstances, we weren't able to um, do that. But we will be doing a uh, podcast session about Somaliland in the near future, so make sure you stay tuned for that. So the question that I was asked was, what does Somaliland mean to you? Uh, I think that that is a... It's a great question, but it's also a question that is so difficult to to answer because it means so much and to put it in such simple terms um, I find it quite difficult, but if I had to use one word to describe what Somalia means to me I would say identity It's a it's where I belong. It's where I'm from. It's where my roots are It's where my entire family is from. It's where I call home granted you can call other places home like the UK is also my home, but in Somaliland, I will never be treated as an other. I would never be othered. I would never be told where you from, where do you come from. I'll always be known as a one of them, um, as I see them as one of my own people. And so I'd say it's identity. So after everyone seen those clips um i want you to now sum up after giving such a elegant speech on how you know the history of the country history of somaliland what does the day 18th of may mean to you as a proud somalander and it means a lot for me and uh, because in i'm the generation that actually in uh, grew up with the 18th of may I was a teenager when Somaliland reinstated its sovereignty. And since then, I'm actually in, uh, in, uh, I'm an activist mm -hmm. since, uh, since that day. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm proud to say that I'm part of the people who are actually initiated in uh, the celebration of 18 May in in a large scale in, in the diaspora and uh, uh, outside Somaliland of course the first 18 May that took place in outside of Somaliland in in a large scale uh, few thousand people attended it was in Holland the Netherlands in the in the town of Leiden and and I was among the people in in 
who was who were leading actually the 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 the, the, cele- the, the preparation and and the whole the cer- idea the whole ceremony the, and everything and and even the idea of of celebrating the, it was the tenth anniversary of Somaliland mm-hmm. I still remember in we were in the town of Utrecht in the Netherlands because I used to live in the Netherlands uh, I'm a Dutch Somalilander of course of course and uh, and uh, we were in a meeting. preparing a rally in for it in October 2000 and and that day it was a Sunday 19th of September 2000 in Utrecht were preparing the rally for Somaliland in in Den Haag the uh, the Hague and uh, when we discussed the, prop- the 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 rally and why we gonna organize the rally and how we gonna organize and we agreed on the day I say it and don't forget we have 18 may coming in uh, next year and it was in October mm. next year is going to be the 10th anniversary of Somaliland mm-hmm. and we can we have to organize in a very big way so that we actually in uh, introduce Somaliland to, to the, the Dutch people, yeah, yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that is what happened. And uh, everyone was saying, "Okay, let's organize first the rally, and then we'll see the 18th." <laughs> yes. But luckily, Alhamdulillah, they were in uh, other young people who actually in, uh, in the nomad organization that we set up after that rally, mm-hmm. in uh, who actually commit themselves to actually organize that event. And yeah, mashallah, it was. the biggest event ever of course on, at that time yes 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 yeah and uh, it's been actually broadcasted in the bbc somali service and uh, a big uh, very big journalist uh, so uh, from bbc somali saeed ali musa okay. attended the event uh, and still still the his words echoes and your head. in uh, in my head he was saying i've never seen such an event where s- thousands of people came together with paint, painted the, the flags of Somaliland uh, on the hair, yeah, the head yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and uh, cheeks and you know he was actually saying it's like a football match <laughs> you know <laughs> and uh, yeah and that's why I'm called Eat Somaliland and uh, I've uh, committed myself to actually in uh, because Somaliland in uh, came in in a circumstance in such a circumstance that actually in uh, its history is for some people is difficult to understand so i committed myself to actually teach or actually in uh, educate in educate in uh, non somalilanders and even somalilanders there are so many young somalilanders british somalilanders dutch somalilanders that actually has been in that actually embraced or or in uh, became proud of their identity of somaliland because of my in uh, in contribution Mashallah. and alhamdulillah so 31st years in uh, every corner in the world every town in uh, whether it's north america europe africa australia. middle east australia mm-hmm. 18 may is is it's been ce- uh, celebrated, celebrated yes. and uh, some people will celebrate tomorrow some people will celebrate on saturday because it's weekend yes of course so yeah i will take this opportunity to say all my fellow somalilanders happy 18th of may of course of course yeah. and happy 18th of may to you other too of course thank you of course likewise i feel like with me i feel like it's very important to understand where obviously i wasn't born in somalia i was my parents are from hergesa um all my knowledge of somalia has come through them and uh i remember when i was i would say 14 years old that was the first time i went out to somalia myself with my family and i got to experience a lot of things first hand uh, see how the land is see how life is over there stay mm-hmm. there for a few months and wallahi like every ever since then it's given me this sense of like it wasn't what i initially thought you know because when you're young there's there's some things that are attached and people think negatively about the motherland homeland and 
at the time I was I remember I wasn't keen on it but after experiencing everything firsthand and seeing how everything was I was just I was like yeah I was I was, I was shocked I was like I actually like it like I love yeah. I love everything about it like the people was nice the like I was playing football every day outside there was like a nice pitch where the house was and he gave me we was playing football over there I was even motivated enough to uh, my old my old football team at the time I asked the head coach can I bring some old kicks because I know in football there's a lot of waste um, the kits there's always new kits every year and yeah. new clothes yeah. and the old clothes always gets thrown away so I thought instead of throwing it away that year give it to me because I'm going back to I'm going back home I'm going to Hargeisa and I wanted to give something back to the community and ever since then I've had this love for like seeing where I'm actually from yeah. and it's nice to see like everything first eye and obviously ever since then I've always wanted to go back obviously circumstances we've had COVID we've had you know obviously I'm still in education so you know university studies I had to do my A-levels GCs all those things back in the day so I feel like the opportunity hasn't arised but I will inshallah one day go back and I want to document it for you guys to see because I feel like there is a lot of like especially outside of like the Somalian community there is a lot of people that would paint it in a negative brush but at the end of the day like we know our country best so we need to project it the best way possible yeah, absolutely so absolutely. um there is actually one thing that i wanted to touch on which is obviously the fires that happened uh the start of ramadan we had the hargeisa fires uh fire and it was so devastating to see how so many businesses so many families lost livestock lost their whole life because a lot of people a lot of families they put everything into businesses yeah and you know like when i hear things like one of the fire officers was saying this whole market was like a ticking time bomb like you know like things like that it makes me feel like why isn't the infrastructure there in the first place to prevent like at the end of the day Qadr Allah, like it happened you know but we need to reduce the cause as low as possible you know the risk yeah. so the risk exactly mm -hmm. so um so seeing that was very sad however i have been enlightened and i have been proud to see like a lot of things have been done to recover i saw a lot of videos that came out on social media around the time like of you know w w mothers and people helping out putting out the fires uh giving food to the fire officers because they are heroes at the end of the day they saved a lot of lives they saved a lot of things and i just want to give my heart out to those people that was affected but i feel like we as a as a nation have to understand how we need to have infrastructure in place so things like that doesn't isn't a frequent recurrence we can't have things where you know like fires can happen anywhere it doesn't matter if you're in america uk or you know Somaliland, nigeria like it doesn't matter where you are what part of the world one thing goes wrong they could be a massive disaster however you need to make sure that the risk isn't as high and you need to m reduce that risk as low as possible so maybe having the f infrastructure like shelters why is it like actual pillars and a whole like you know like when we go to um like shopping malls yeah you see a lot of businesses and you mm -hmm. see a lot of things there obviously the market has a different type of feeling but you always need to protect your people first health and safety is always number one so um the stuff that i've seen on social media has been very pleasant to see and the recovery has been very good and inshallah like we can improve what was already there in the beginning you know like yeah we can yeah. take note so yeah carry on I think I think yeah, in, uh, it was a devastating uh, fire, as you said, and because it was the biggest uh, market in the capital or in Somaliland in general, and uh, so, and it was the wealth that has been actually accumulated or worked for since then in uh, the reinstatement of Somaliland sovereignty. In, uh, because people, when they come back from refugee camps in 1991, they had nothing. So they worked hard. Everything started from the scratch. And uh, the people who were in this market, they, they were the people who, were, who actually started maybe with $50 in, with their business in 1991 or, or 1994. Or, 
uh, early 90s or late 90s. And today they were millionaires or they had maybe a few hundred thousand dollars worth in, yes. uh, in business. Of course. In, uh, and uh, yeah, but the thing is the Somalilanders are very resilient and, uh, and as you said, in, it is very unfortunate that we haven't, in, uh, in especially as a state, we haven't uh, in, uh, tried to to prevent, yeah, in uh, such calamities because in uh, you have you cannot in prevent accident taking place, but you can reduce risks. Of course, yeah? of course, and that's what you were explaining, and. Uh, and that is the responsibility of institutions, whether it is the local government, whether it is the Ministry of Interiors, or whether it is uh, in all that in uh, in state in institutions that are actually there to look after the people and decide for them, plan for them, in because nobody, whether they are in Somaliland or in Africa in general or in Europe in America. Nobody, in, at the first in, instance, nobody like to be enforced by laws. They, in, at the first instance, they, they see it as uh, something that actually is not in, in their favors. But actually, when, 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 the, in, uh, when the laws is introduced and enforced, they will reap the fruits of course. later. And uh, for example, the the fire preventions and uh, fire in uh, extinguishers uh, that in uh, that they have uh, that actually structured as proper markets and uh, in, uh, so that not actually even not only fire if two but two persons or in uh, a, a roof collapse. Mm then it will be in uh, uh, such a disaster of course of so course. in uh, in uh, but i think that fire has actually wake up it was it has been a wake up call for somaliland and from now on in uh, there is that in uh, in uh, in uh, willingness to actually in uh, in put the infrastructure in place mm. To, to to prevent in uh, in, uh, in such in uh, of course such lost and disasters and hopefully they in uh, and Somalilanders everywhere in the world they they are they has there have been very generous in fundraising for for the actually victims and the people who lost their businesses in uh, millions of dollars has been actually yes. in, uh, raised to to help uh, the I saw the, the it hundred percent. And here in uh, London, uh, I'm part of the West London Somaliland community. Of course, we raised so far about seven thousand pounds. That's very good, Marshall. And uh, we're thinking to in uh, to to actually then uh, we're hoping more will come. Of course, and because we haven't still closed the, the fundraising, mm -hmm. but also even the uh, the 18 May celebration events will be a fundraising opportunity. For, for the in, uh, victims of uh, Wahain fire market. Wahain, of course, yes. And on, sat on this Friday, an event will take place in South Hall, yes. in West London. And uh, the money that actually uh, in is raised there will go to Wahain fire market and, uh, and victims. Of course, mashallah. Yeah. I feel like what I will do is put a link in the description so you guys can click and there'll be like GoFundMe's for obviously the victims that the money will go to those victims directly and uh, just fundraise in general. If you want to be a part of, you know, recovery and stuff like that. I feel like one thing that I've definitely noticed is like, like you said, this is a wake up call. And I feel like now we are now looking into things where you must have the infrastructure. Now there's a lot of importance on infrastructure how does your structures look like what's the what's the insulation like what's the structure is it strong can it maintain all kind of weathers yeah. you know like you know like uh, alhamdulillah we're not a we're not a hurricane country like you know you see in america and yeah. the caribbeans yeah. mm -hmm. but uh can it withstand heavy rain and extreme heat so i think like now there's been extra focus on that which is very nice to see 
on a much more lighter note, obviously, like I said before, I have gone. Uh, unfortunately, it's only once, but inshallah, it'll be many more in the future. I feel like for a lot of non-Somalilanders, when you're visiting Somaliland, what are like the best places to visit? If you was to recommend for the people, what are the yeah. best places to go? Yeah, in uh, there are uh, many actually in uh, places to discover in Somaliland. Somaliland is still is still is uh, untapped in a country in terms of tourism. Even Somalilanders are still discovering. Yes, it's, yes, yes. It's very true. Yeah, in. Uh, we have, uh, to start with, we have a long coast of 850 kilometers in very, I would say, in beach, in a clean beach that nobody is yet went. And uh, we have also Mount, uh, Somaliland has also very mountainous regions like Sanag region and even in uh, Closer to Hargeisa, we have the Qan Libah mountain, which is a uh, very, very in, uh, nice area. There is also for the people who, who like archaeology, Somal there is cave paintings in Somaliland that date f five, nine thousand years back. Las, Las Gale cave paintings, there are other that has been dis still is in the get discovered. Discovery, yeah. Uh, Dagah Gure is another one. In uh, uh, there are some undergrounds in the caves that actually are there, mm -hmm. and uh, so there is there is a lot. There is this, the the beach. The in uh, and if you want, the, if you're yeah. a city person, you have Hargeisa, which is a vibrant city. Yes. Yeah. You have, you yeah. have you know you have Borodo that you can go visit, yeah. and then if Hargeisa, you like, so for example, there are cultural centers like Hargeisa Cultural Center where there are. And they organized in uh, on a weekly basis, not only weekly, maybe daily, every week, mm -hmm. three or four events. In whether they are in poem readings, in uh, f folklore dance, mm -hmm. in, uh, in traditional Somaliland dance, there is uh, in uh, in other cafes in like uh, Jumeira Jumeira Cafe, mm -hmm. Hidadour. All places that actually are in live music are, are played, live Somaliland music. Of course, of course. Uh, are played there in uh, live songs and uh, nice food. Yeah. I feel like I feel like what people need to take from all of this is that it, the land is so fast, the people are so resilient. There's a lot to explore about Somaliland. You know, Somaliland has a very interesting past. You know, you can learn so much about it. You know, you can take so many characteristics about the past of Somaliland and what that means to each individual person. And as a as a person that wasn't born there, I definitely feel like a strong, I do have a strong attachment and affiliation to Somaliland because at the end of the day, that's my country. That's where I'd want to live in the future. You know, make sure things go well inshallah and one thing that really was on my mind is how like everyone when everyone goes back home and when i say home i mean back to your own country whether it's somaliland whether it's whatever country you're from that uh, for you watching we always go home with a sense of relax you know i live in europe or i live in america or i live outside um outside of my country and i work for the whole year summer comes i want to relax so they go back home go back to obviously in this instance i'm talking about small land they go back home to small land and then you enjoy yourself you relax nafis all good boom you say mat salam after a couple of weeks months and then go continue with your life what i was actually talking about was and i've said this before I want us to actually, when we're, whenever we're going back, we always go back and achieve one thing. So for me, I was talking about how, like, at the end of the day, yes, it's a holiday, relax, enjoy yourself. However, when you're from that country, when your parents are from that country and you have a strong affiliation to that country, you should always leave something behind, leave like an imprint. So obviously I'm into the football industry, 
And I understand and recognise that there is a lot of waste in football. Yeah. So what happens is there's a lot of kits, and I've said this before, I said they throw kits away. And I even had the example of, I asked my coach at the time, can I take some back, give it to the people? It's it, For me, it's nothing. It's not that big of a deal because I know I don't need it like that. But I know my brothers and sisters, they can use some other things and mm, do whatever yeah. they need to do with it. The uh, material here is more durable than what you see kids are wearing, for example, in the streets, you know, like I want them to be wearing something that is sustainable, that something that is durable. And I then obviously had my ideas of whenever I do go back, it won't be as regular because of what other commitments I have in my life. However, when I do go back, I do want to leave my mark and say, you know what, I've done this. So now... I can trust that something I've I've given back, you know, slowly, 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 surely. What is your take on us as a diaspora going back home and doing more for the community to build and eventually improve the standard of living? Yeah, in, uh, yeah there is a lot that we can do and, uh, and the diaspora are in uh, really in uh, doing it even now it it's just need to 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 do more and maybe in a structured way i many years back i actually in advised in uh, one of the ministers in somaliland he was the minister of uh, in uh, planning and development in uh, to actually have a website where people Somaliland is diaspora when they go back to Somaliland if they have maybe in uh, one week free time and they want to transfer their skills to their brothers and sisters in Somaliland a website that they can go on and then just uh, register and tell what the, what kind of skills this uh, they have and what kind of qualifications what they, what they, how, how many years of experience and uh, their, their availability when they are available. Mm -hmm. Then, then the actually, in, uh, when the Somalilanders go back there, so if he or she has uh, five days or six days free time, then they, they could, could contribute actually to enrich their skills in uh, of Somaliland is uh, back home and that is still not yet the case mm -hmm. but in Somaliland but they transfer the skills in a different way they set up businesses they employ peoples Somalilanders in uh, they organize uh, events they they set up centers for example all these cafes or centers that I was now in naming on it, uh, in uh, in uh, telling the people where to, to go visit, and visit where yeah, to yeah. go, their 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 owners or or founders are uh, diaspora. Okay. In whether it is the Hargeisa Cultural Center, in uh, whether it's uh, Jumeirah Cafe, whether it's the Hidador Cafe, whether it's uh, in uh, other cafes in uh, in uh, what they call the there is also another one Libahieda. In the, there are diaspora who contributes, who bring the ID there, and uh, the, the, there are so many business, businesses in uh, in any sector, every sector, mm. where the diaspora is present. So in, it's just need in uh, that in more structured way that actually in uh, in transfer the skills, not those who are there set up mm -hmm. who set up the businesses and their lives there but there are the majority are still outside so the way that that majority can still transfer their skills is to actually in set up an institution back home it doesn't have to be a new institution one of the ministries in somaliland maybe the planning ministry to have a website volunteering website for a skills transfer for the diaspora and they can allocate each each one of them to a ministry to, an, mm -hmm. to a community center to mm -hmm. a hospital you know so th that's what Do you think the, social media mm -hmm. can help that yes yes i think so 
I think so. I think so. And, uh, and uh, at the end, it will come, I think, because in, uh, in, in a way, we Somalians were a bit slow in, in, <laughs> in implementing policies. <laughs> and our politicians are, are still not that in, uh, in uh, you know, energetic. Mm. Yeah. Do you see yourself helping, like being involved in that type of environment in the future? In uh, yes, of course. In uh, actually, I in lived in Somaliland uh, about almost two years now. I am I'm, I'm back here about I'm six months now here. Mm -hmm. But just before the COVID in uh, January 2020, I went to Somaliland and I came back October 2021. Oh, okay, okay. In uh, so in. I worked in that center, the Hargeisa Cultural Center, in, uh, where Dr. Jama, I'm sorry, Jama, a friend of me, has found it. Mm -hmm. he, he opened now in, a new one in Berbera, Berbera Cultural Center. And those centers actually helped young Somalilandis to, to, to actually in, uh, achieve their aspiration and actually to, to have uh, an imagination of, of, their, of, of, their, of their success, you know in uh, there are courses that that they do in in because somaliland today young somalilanders in uh, many young somalilanders more somalilands are writing now there are more writers young somaliland writers than mm. 10 years or 15 years before of course of course because of of argeisa because of the argeisa international book fair in the, it is a week long and it is also a, a festival that in, uh, in uh, Somalilanders uh, or non-Somalilanders who are visiting can visit, Hargeisa yeah. can visit. It well. takes place every year in July, from uh, the last week of July. So in, uh, there are thousands of in authors and writers that take part in, uh, from around the world. In, uh, so in, and in that Three, three weeks before that week, the whole month of July, they they, they organize courses in writing courses, how to how to write in stories. There are in uh, competitions of story and story in writing, and uh, there are painting competitions. Then so so many young artists came out. Mm -hmm. Uh, in, uh, f from that actually in the competitions uh, today and uh, and yet yeah, diaspora contributed a lot to Somaliland mm -hmm. and it's because of the diaspora that Somaliland actually in uh, in uh, came back it's been built from scratch and without international aid built a state from the scratch and organized a modern statehood actually with elections with in institutions and with everything mm -hmm. so in uh, uh, Somaliland is an example for Africa in uh, that aid is not something that actually is dependent uh, yeah. you don't need to be dependent you on aid yeah, exactly mm -hmm. if aid could develop a country Africa would not be in the situation that that uh, they are now mm -hmm. Because since independence in 1960 until early 90s, each African nation used to get from Europeans a budget support. Mm. Budget support mean in the budget that has been run in uh, in uh, in uh, to, to, to with the country is been paid partially, maybe 20 or 30 percent by the Europeans. By the Europeans. And I don't think that such in uh, in system can benefit any nation. No. And I don't think that the European will uh, are paying this money to to develop countries. No. But they're paying this money to 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 actually make independent those nations dependent on them on them on them and not actually think out of the box and do their own things. In uh, the same way that the European developed, the faith, the same way that the Asians de developed. Of course, themselves. of course. So we Africans, we have to wake up and and actually say no to in foreign aid, and 
just manage our taxes and revenues and there is a lot of uh, natural resources in of course, of Africa course. and in Somaliland. So we exactly. have to, to, to count on those resources and 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 use the maximums in uh, out of the technology, new technology. Of course. Because I do feel like Africa does have a lot of natural resources that can they can benefit from. Absolutely. Even like if you look at Europe, Europe doesn't have a lot of natural resources they just have a lot of good institutions they they good they're, they're good with the uh like the tertiary sector where they 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 know how to manufacture goods and make sure that things are the finished product but when you have as much natural resources as we do as africans it does bring to light how much the europeans have been taken away from africa the the gems that you see the queen is where it is from africa they originate from africa all these things that you see in like museums and stuff like that that is from africa yeah. and to think that there's even more than that it's like we need to tap into that in order for us to enhance as a, as a continent and to tap on that we need a system a good governance system because what the european and the western did is they they actually managed their their in uh, their in uh, system governance system in a way that actually in doesn't in doesn't uh, create a chaos you know mm -hmm. they build the strong institutions they actually valued education mm -hmm. you know and we 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 need to do we have <coughs> to do that as, as Somaliland is to start with. In, uh, and we have to know there is no development, no development takes place without a good governance system. Of course. Of as course. long as Africa doesn't have good governance systems, wh whether you are the richest country of the world, look at Nigeria. They have such in uh, big reserves of oils <laughs> it's uh, saudi arabia and and look saudi arabia look nigeria yeah so so it is because it is it is the governance system that that needs to be actually in uh, in uh, tightened and 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 make a, a, a very in transparent very in uh, in uh, democratic Mm -hmm. governance system mm -hmm. yeah where people talented people are in uh, in uh, in in charge of the institutions mm -hmm. yeah that's true that's true yeah i do understand like there is a lot of, there's a lot of areas for improvement however bringing it back onto 18 for me before we wrap up i do want everyone that is watching to understand that no country is perfect no country is the absolute like best and it's 100 percent. everything's working efficiently every country has rooms for improvement we understand our rooms for improvement however this is a day of celebration this is a day of joy this is a day of jubilance and i feel like each somalander that you speak to if you're a non-somalander and you're not from africa or you're 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 outside of somaliland understanding go find go find a person go meet up with a person they'll explain to you how much this day means to them how much their country means to them and it's the same way if you speak to i don't know americans english they, they're patriotic they're patriotic people they care about their countries so it's the same with us in the horn of africa too i do want to say thank you uh, i really appreciate you coming out uh, it's welcome. been it's been very very good to have you for everyone watching i do wish you a great 18th of may great independence day um and for me from me and Eid, make sure you comment subscribe make sure you share to everyone the socials have been flying out throughout the episode so go check them out and yeah till next time see ya happy 18th of may